Fantastic. Hello, everybody. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I've seen there's a couple of you um, from Europe and UK. So thank you so much for getting up <laughs> this morning. I know it probably wasn't an easy one and uh, and for joining us today in our session. Uh, as Poppy mentioned, we will be covering um, all things uni buddy, all things student buddies. Um, so our session is all about getting the most out of your student buddies. Um, so I'm Georgia Horsley. I am a customer success executive here at UniBuddy. I host the fortnightly ambassador training and I'll let William introduce himself. Okay, thank you so much, Georgia, my best partner. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, my dear friends all over the world. I think it would be a bit confusing to say uh, good morning or good afternoon. So <laughs> I just want to wish everyone a good time. Thank you for joining us in this morning session if you are in UK. My name is William. I'm originally from Indonesia. And today I'm going live from Jakarta, Indonesia. And um, in terms of my short bio, I was uh, UWA, University of Western Australia, Unibody Student Ambassador, and currently uh, serving the role as a UWA Graduate Ambassador. Fantastic. So I think um, I want to start by saying that we're going to start chopping up our session into three sections. So we're going to go through you know, how you can find the right buddies uh, for your buddy scheme. We're going to talk about how you can incentivize our students. I know uh, Carolina and Kim touched on that in their session. And we're going to delve into that in a bit more detail with an ambassador. And we're also going to talk about how you can keep students messaging on brand and how um, how to kind of keep that vibe going uh, with those those students that you have. So without further ado, let's kind of get straight in. So William, my first question for you is why did you initially want to be a buddy? How did you get into it and why? Uh, Georgia, honestly, this is this question sounds very simple, but it's very complicated to answer. So let me just start uh, answering it by referring to my experience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia, uh, a place, a beautiful country in which higher education is still a privilege for most of the people, for most of the students. So when I got a chance to get scholarship uh, from the government of Indonesia to study abroad, I chose to study in Perth, Western Australia. And I was thinking to myself that this is only one time opportunity. It could be the once in a lifetime opportunity. So I wanted to make the most of it. So it's like um, take it or leave it opportunity to me. And what led me to be Unibody student ambassador uh, was because I have stories to share. So I, I was so convinced and I believe in myself that my stories could inspire more younger generation, not only in Indonesia, but also from all over the world. So with that intention, I try uh, to register to become a Unibody student ambassador. Amazing, amazing. I think, I think it's interesting to hear how you've decided to become an ambassador because I think everyone's motivation to be an ambassador and why they wanted to be an ambassador in the first place is so different. Um, and I think yours is, is definitely an interesting one. And I know we'll delve into it in a little bit more detail a bit later on, but super interesting. So I think coming from a buddy's perspective, what qualities do you think that universities should look for in uni buddies? And what qualities do you feel that you brought to the role as well? Well, I think uh, we should um, agree that everyone has stories to share. Mm -hmm. That's number one rule. And I think the first uh, quality that a unibody should have is the willingness to share these stories. You don't have to be extrovert. You don't have to have certain uh, type of personalities, mm -hmm. but you just need to think of yourself as someone who will inspire the others, as someone who will help the others, as someone who will assist prospective students when uh, maybe they were so confused about what life um, might be in the future or in the, in the next place that they end up. And also when you have the willingness to share, you need to frame it, you need to say it simply, and you need to um, identify the key messages uh, so that uh, the prospective students who are talking to you, they can simply grab your point of view. Mm -hmm. And I think the second one, is you have to be genuine. And by being genuine, it means that you don't have to be someone else. You don't have to be uh, someone who is not you. You don't have to pretend to be someone else. So being a little vulnerable is okay because you are human. And mm -hmm. the prospective students or whoever um, talking to you, they don't expect to be answered by machines or search engine, let's say. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, a unibody should really 
uh, speak to the others, to prospective students like human. So sharing stories, sharing positive stories, sharing your problems and how you solve it. I think that's the most important point of view that you could share. And last but not least, I think the good quality that a unibody should have is you have to know that life didn't stop there. So it, I think it's very common for every student ambassador to be caught up with uh, study routines, with exams and with unending assignments. Mm -hmm. But by being unibody student ambassador, it means that a unibody should realize that they have higher purpose to achieve. Mm -hmm. when, when they were caught up with um, some busy schedules, they didn't have to be so overwhelmed. Rather than that, they should think that this is the one shot opportunity. If I do this well, I could help people, I could help prospective students, and I could be a good representative of my institution. And it will lead you somewhere. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fantastic. I think it's really interesting, like the way you speak, you you have a lot of emphasis over the um, idea of ambassadors being storytellers. And I love that because I've never heard anyone describe it like that before. But I think it's so true, because really, what are those ambassadors doing when they're telling people about their experiences? They're sharing stories. And I think it is really important to be a good storyteller and to be able to have the ability to share those stories, to share those experiences with others. And uh, I think when you spoke about being genuine as well, that's something that I really hammer home with my ambassador training is that we need to be genuine you need to be authentic because if you're talking about only the good stuff at your university then you know the and, and not all the challenges that you face and how you've solved them and things like that then these prospective students might turn up and then they face challenges and they say oh I didn't expect this nobody told me about this so I definitely think there's an emphasis on being authentic being genuine um, and having that willingness to share that you spoke about and share those stories and being able to do it in such an eloquent way um, and of course, the last thing you said, you know, the purpose of it all and and really understanding that, you know, your your student experience doesn't just stop at your course. And actually, there's so much more to it. You can be a representative for your university and really share with others. So that's fantastic. So all of those skills you spoke about, I think they can be quite hard to define um, and find out um, that, uh, that an ambassador has those skills. So how do you think that a university would be able to interview students or a way that they could find out if those students have those skills? Well, it's very difficult, but it's impossible. Well, uh -huh. what I think uh, what my university has done uh, during my time was quite good because I think paperwork is very important for everyone because you want to know the profile of the student ambassadors or the potential bodies that you will work with for the next, let's say, six months or a year. And then uh, after doing those administrative things, I think the first uh, skill that the interviewer should do is the storytelling skill. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that everyone is a good storyteller, but it's not impossible to attain this skill. So um, if someone is not good enough in doing storytelling, the unibody uh, organizer uh, at each home university could give them training uh, could ask them to tell the stories about themselves because the easiest way to ask people to talk is talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to give a very uh, big topics at the very beginning, but just ask the potential uh, unibodies to uh, tell stories, the unique parts or the little secret maybe about themselves. And I think the second one, uh, when uh, the storytelling skills was trained, uh, it could be very important to know someone's intention mm -hmm. because unibody is not something that we do uh, as a quote-unquote full-time job. That's something that requires a sense of purpose. So you, you need to really find someone, a good unibody student ambassador with the right intention because if they only do this for fun, it's all right. But you have to do this for fun but with purpose, because directly or indirectly, when you talk to prospective students, let's say I was in Perth, Western Australia, and was talking to uh, prospective students from Indonesia, it was quite similar uh, to me in terms of culture. But if you talk to someone from North America, from India, or from Africa, you need to really find someone who has the flexibility to see things differently, someone who is open-minded, Mm -hmm. And you have to test that and give them opportunities to explore 
whether the prospective um, unibody student ambassadors could do that. If they uh, couldn't do that at the first place, it's very important to give them more knowledge about that. So it's all about cultural intelligence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's really interesting that you were saying, you know, an openness to other people's cultures and other countries and things like that. Because as you said, you will be, you could be speaking to people all over the world as a student ambassador. Yeah. I think sometimes student ambassadors don't realise the kind of enormity of that task and how, um, how, as you said, you can connect with so many different people and build those relationships with different people as well, as I know we spoke about before. Um, so I wanted to open up to the audience now and uh, see if they've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wanted to talk about the qualities that William spoke about earlier. So we mentioned that um, that William thought the best qualities of a Unibody ambassador would be um, a kind of ability to story tell, um, the ability to be genuine and to be honest and to be authentic um, when talking about these experiences. Uh, he's also now spoken about being flexible, being open minded, uh, being able to em embrace diversity and embrace different cultures. And of course, the last one, that purpose, that intention, that reason that they're doing it. So I wanted to open up to the audience and ask which of those four do they think is the most important in a buddy? So that was a being able to be a storyteller, so willingness to share being genuine um, and authentic, being flexible and open-minded or having a purpose or intention. So let me know in the chat, um, which do you think is the most important? And also maybe a reason why you've made that selection. Because here's a, a few uh, of my colleagues from Unibuddy there. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys say, but also any of the universities that are listening to us today as well, I'd be interested to know what it is that uh, you think is most important and, and what really you look for in a buddy as well. So I'm just gonna open the floor to questions, to, to comments there and see uh, what we get back. So while we wait, we can um, discuss also um, kind of your interview process really, William. So I know we spoke briefly about the fact that um, you, you were kind of asked about the, the, you know being able to share and, and that kind of thing but what how did your interview process look if you could give me kind of a description of, of what happened well the first phase was quite uh, administrative but interesting so mm -hmm. i was asked to fill up a form uh, about my short bio about my uh, student details and the second part of the uh, registration form was about the past uh, in the real world setting or situation when uh, prospective students ask me certain questions. Mm -hmm. So my interviewer uh, lists down three or four questions. Uh, some of them are general one, and some of them are specific ones. Mm -hmm. And then I was asked to uh, give answers based on my own knowledge. And I, I wasn't allowed to um, find info on the website, but uh, okay. maybe they, they just want to see how I react with questions. Mm -hmm. So it was clearly instructed that I have to uh, rephrase, I have to use my own words and not doing the cut paste kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's, um, it's a good way to, to see whether a student or potential student ambassador could do a good storytelling mm -hmm. because uh, they, was, they were asked questions and they were expected to give it um, in a short and simple way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and not just uh, putting all the details on the paper. Fantastic. I think that is definitely a good way to test it is to kind of give them an example, kind of throw them in the deep end and say, right, answer this question. I think, uh, yeah, definitely gives them an opportunity also for the students to see if it is something that they would enjoy because it's all right saying I want to be a student ambassador, but I think it's definitely worth giving it a go and seeing how you feel actually answering those questions and uh, whether you feel you'd be successful in that. So that's great. I can see now we've got loads of responses on the chat. So I'm just gonna read a couple of those out. Uh, so I can see, uh, I think, so Alice uh, is one of my colleagues in sales at Unibody. She said, uh, I think being genuine, I feel Unibody is all about trusting your peers. So I agree. One of our key values actually at Unibody is uh, that peer-to-peer -peer connection and uh, actually being able to help and trust in your peers and rely on them. So, and actually Raman's also said the same thing, authentic, being genuine. I think kids know they are being sold to nowadays. Uh, so I think that's really true. A lot of universities um, can feel a little bit silly 
to um, prospective students. So I think that authenticity and that being genuine really makes that university look more personal and definitely yeah. reaches out to those students rather than it just being like, come to my university, give me your money sort of thing. Uh, and, and Roman said, so having something answering genuinely creates that trust. Uh, we've got Stephanie from UCFB, uh, it's University Campus of Football Business and she's in the UK. She said, I think being genuine and authentic is really key. Students get the perspective of employability, et cetera, from marketing, but are looking for an insider perspective, the good, the bad, and the ugly from a student voice. So she's talking there about really giving that well-rounded view and that well-rounded perspective of university and not just the good bits, but also the bad bits, as we mentioned earlier, giving that kind of idea of what it's actually going to be like being a student rather than just sugarcoating it. Um, yeah. Patrick said, I think being genuine uh, is really crucial because I think it builds trust with prospects and instills confidence. So it seems like uh, overwhelmingly everyone is saying it's that genuine um, and it's it's that authenticity. But really, there is no wrong answer. I think all of the qualities that we spoke about really can be important. It can be important for different ambassadors as well and also different universities. But um, I do think really that point's been hammered home that they really are interested in that authenticity and that. Um, well, that means you're doing it right, right? <laughs> Yes, exactly. So that's all good. I think it's interesting as well because you've come from a different perspective, haven't you, as a postgraduate student? Yeah. So I think um, definitely being a student ambassador maybe could have been a little bit different for you than it would have been for an undergraduate student coming from a professional background as well. And I think even that difference will change kind of the way that you see the values and the way that you see being a student ambassador. Um, but let's move on to the second question. So uh, the second session is all about incentivization. <laughs> and uh, really how to get the most of your bodies. I think it's probably the one that really relates to the, the um, session topic the most. Yeah. Um, so when you were at UWA, mm -hmm. how did they incentivize you to be a buddy? For instance, did they pay you? Did they offer you rewards? I know Carolina and Kim touched on this a little bit earlier. So it'd be interesting to hear what you did, UWA did and what your experience of this was. Well, I think I have to mention this. They paid me fortnightly, but it wasn't my focus at all. My mm -hmm. focus was, they provided me with strategic opportunities to know more people, to know more local friends, to know more uh, international prospective students, including their family. They gave me opportunity to interact first-handedly, to talk to strangers, to use the 45 minutes of campus tour session, not only to tell them about the features of the university, but also to share Australian values, to share my experience, to listen to them, to find out what problems they they might have faced uh, in the past and they might have uh, faced in the future. And me as the representative or ambassador of my university, I calmed them down. I told them that it's very normal to feel that maybe a little bit isolated when the first time uh, people or students come to new places. Uh, but the support system was so good from universities uh, also from the society. So I think it's very important for me to keep doing that because I came from a communication background and it's very important for me to keep communicating, to keep improving myself, to meet more people, to learn from their perspective and also to see what problems they face and the potential solutions because that's the skills that I think in the 21st century or the next 20 or 30 years, mm -hmm. the world needs. Absolutely. So we, we, uh, we need to have the problem solving skills. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I think it's really interesting because when we talk about incentivization, I think a lot of us think, is it paying? Is it giving them gifts? Is it giving them awards? But actually, I think it's really interesting the way you talk about it is the fact that you gained values and you gained experiences and you gained kind of practice within that culture and uh, within those skills, those communication skills and things like that, and actually being able to put the skills that you already had into practice. Uh, so I think it's really interesting the way you talk about it, even though you were actually paid, you, you speak about that that wasn't your, your motivation, that wasn't your intention, really, you were there for the, the opportunities that it possessed, and uh, that was just a nice kind of thing on the side, that extra payment there. Agree, agree. Fantastic. So uh, that leads really nicely on to what really motivated you, what do you think motivates students? To, to be ambassadors. Um, of course, some people are really motivated by money, um, but as you spoke about those values and things that you gained, so what do you think motivates students? Well, I think I am coming from the international student perspective, Georgia, mm -hmm. and it's very important for me. I took it as the one-shot opportunity, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study abroad. 
So um, I really want to make the most of it. And also um, by, by registering to be Unibody Student Ambassador, I think I would have experience, I would have the interaction, networking, and also international friendship. And mm -hmm. it would be possible for me to take or to treat Western Australia as a big classroom for me to learn from people, not only in the classroom setting, but also to find it in the real life, uh, how people act, how people think, how people embrace diversity, because people who come from different nationalities and cultural background might perceive differently towards certain things. Sometimes it's not acceptable in the home countries, but it's acceptable in Australia, let's say. Mm -hmm. And it's very important for me when I uh, took the chance and I was chosen as the Unibody Student Ambassador to embrace those opportunities. Fantastic. So really talking about embracing opportunities, embracing that culture, really gaining something value wise from that, um, from being an ambassador. And I think also a lot of our partners who are here with us today, they'll be contemplating maybe new partners thinking, actually, do I need to pay my ambassadors or or can I um, offer them something else? And I think it's really important to actually bear in mind that, you know, that we shouldn't um, belittle the the values that actually you can gain from it and the experiences uh, they're kind of payment in themselves really aren't they incentivization in themselves the fact that really those experiences can take you many places and actually they can open up many doors for you um, and even just many experiences in life for you as you've mentioned the fact that you know you had this opportunity to go and study in Perth which is amazing um, and you had you know all that time to spend there and really soak in that culture and soak in that experience so that's that's fantastic um, so once again, opening up to the audience, and uh, I wanted to ask if, if you've ever tried anything um, creatively to incentivize your ambassadors, let me know in the comments, um, maybe thinking about the kind of value side of things as well when you uh, train your ambassadors or when you advertise the opportunity to be an ambassador what are the values and what are the experiences that you speak about in your advertisement and what what do you tell ambassadors they can gain and maybe if you don't already what are you thinking about um sharing with your ambassadors now that you've, you've heard from from myself and William today and thinking about those values those experiences and uh those those different uh you know incentivizations that you can gain from being um, an ambassador so let me know in the comments guys what you're currently doing and what you're thinking um of, of doing in the future with incentivizing uh your ambassadors fantastic i'm just gonna wait for a couple of people so i can see also sophie just uh sent us a, a comment as well she said great to have uh, you join us today william for you what was the most rewarding thing about being a unibody student ambassador she wants to know what was the most rewarding thing about being a student unibody ambassador? Well, I think uh, for someone who want to pursue professional career afterwards, uh, mm -hmm. the chance to be unibody student ambassador, including being volunteers in many activities um, abroad, it's very important. And also it's um, extra values, additional values to the employer, because they knew that uh, even though I was studying abroad and I, I had target to achieve, I still made time to do community service. I still made time to make new friends, to do something uh, unusual, to go out or step out from my comfort zone. Because I know so many people in Australia, they were too afraid to be judged by the others. They were too afraid to show up themselves to the world. And what I had in mind at the time this is like a you know, time bomb. I know that one day I should come back to my home country to do things to contribute to my country. So while it lasts, I have to make the most of it. While the clock is still ticking, I mm -hmm. have to make as many friends as possible to build international networks, to build international friendship. Because I know in five or 10 years time, the business landscape will change. And the only thing that lasts is our connection, is our good relationship, and is our strategic partnership with everyone, basically from all over the world. And that's the only way that we could survive and thrive. Amazing. And I think one of the things that we spoke about before in our earlier conversations is the fact that actually you felt that you made to make you 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 should make every day count because, as you said, it was kind of like a ticking time bomb, and you're thinking, I've only got a finite. Um, amount of days to spend here in Perth so really you made every day count by 
helping other students by gaining more skills yourself and by really embracing that culture that idea of communication and by embracing the university itself as well and really um, singing its praises uh, to other prospective students um, I can see we've also got another comment from uh, Stephanie from US, UCFB and she says we run a semester awards so mostly being uh, exclusive access to our guest speakers uh, we also have a graduation award for the person who really embodied our values um, as an institution throughout their three years so that's amazing so they've got more of a kind of short-term award ceremony they do so they run once a semester um, you know, congratulating ambassadors for the work they've done in the semester. But they've also got that kind of longer term goal, which I really like, uh, where over those three years, that person who's really embodied um, the, the university values and really embodied what it is to be a student ambassador. And uh, they've gone and they really ran with that and uh, they're being congratulated and rewarded for it. And actually getting that, I'm, I'm not sure, Stephanie, is that on their um, degree certificate as well because that'd be awesome or is there kind of like a certification or something like that that'd be really interesting uh sophie's also said une in australia have a fantastic ambassador incentive program uh they don't currently provide monetary reimbursement so this is one of the universities that actually don't pay their uh, student ambassadors they provide different professional development opportunities for their ambassadors they run annual award ceremonies for their most engaged ambassadors as well and they found the most passionate and enthusiastic students are happy to work on this voluntary basis. So very similar to you, William, I know you said kind of it wasn't for the money, it was much more for those experience, the values and uh, that kind of practice that you got um, in those professional skills that uh, you were developing. And uh, she said, whilst enjoying a variety of different exclusive benefits and opportunities. So I think that's really nice that actually UNE have done it in a, a slightly different way where they've got those award ceremonies to actually recognise and congratulate those ambassadors on their work but also really running with the idea of professional development and like you said as a master student that professional side is really important to you um and being able to develop those skills and i think you and e have taken it then to another level where they're thinking about actually offering uh, professional development workshops and and sessions uh, for those student ambassadors as well so that's great nice to hear how other universities are doing it as well um and moving on to our final section now and then kind of opening the floor to some more questions so our final section is about how we can keep students messaging on brand and i know this is quite a wise topic and a bit of a, a scary <laughs> thing to think about uh how can we make sure you know when we're passing that baton over to those students and allowing them the freedom to talk about our universities and um giving them that opportunity and that responsibility to to really uh, talk positively but also authentic authentically about our universities, how are we keeping the students messaging on brand? So my first question for you, William, is what mm -hmm. kind of questions did you receive on Unibody? Because I think that's a good place to start talking about yeah. the questions that you got. So go on. Well, as long as I can remember, most of the prospective students asked me about the syllabus, about the course, about the units that they could take. I instantly referred them to the official website of the universities because mm -hmm. I, I know that the, the website is more reliable than me in terms of course and syllabus. And mm -hmm. the second one, they asked me about the employment or part-time opportunities um, in, in Perth. And also I told them based on my experience, based on my friend's experience, but I didn't guarantee them anything because it's, it's quite difficult to say that once you come here, uh, the part-time job is secure for you. Mm. It's very difficult to say, but I think the third question they asked me uh, was about places to eat out to hang out amazing fantastic so kind of that really not just about the course and when you said when people were asking you about the course or the syllabus you were kind of directing them to that most up-to-date information to make sure you were giving them the most accurate and most uh kind of detailed information about their courses especially if there were courses that you weren't studying on I guess too yeah. um yeah. but also you were talking there about you know that real student experience not just the uh, courses and the um, content of, of the studies, but actually where's the best places to hang out? Where are the best places to eat? Can I get a part-time job? And I think that's something that uh, student ambassadors need to remember is the fact that it's not just about, a student experience isn't just about um, that you know being a student it's actually about all of the other things that come with it it's not just about studying it's about the social side it's about the experiences that you get and also being in another place i guess uh particularly for you i mean being in a whole new country um 
it's very exciting and also can be quite nerve wracking for those those prospective students. And I imagine a lot of them kind of leaned on you for that reassurance and uh, to, to find out a bit more. Did you find that you were getting a lot of questions from from people abroad? Mm, yeah, I think uh, other questions they, they asked me, uh, most of them, not most of them, some of them, when <laughs> we start our initial chatting, they start to tell me about their personal problems. I have problems with my family. I have problems in finding good scholarship. Can you help me? Well, I politely uh, told them I couldn't help you with that, but I can refer you to this link uh, on the websites that you could find or try the opportunity to get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. Or if you have problems with your family, I suggest you to solve it because you have to, to build a strong foundation from home. And then I think it's okay. We are in the age where uh, we are trying to find the best practices, the best form of ourselves. So don't be embarrassed. You are not alone. And I experienced it once. Uh, my friends experienced it once. So uh, we, are, we are similar. So there, there's nothing that, uh, that makes you uh, less, less human than me, let's say. And then they, they start telling me about um, their future goals and they, they want to be, after they, they uh, pursue the degree, taking the studies and that. So basically I, I made a lot of uh, virtual friends without mm -hmm knowing their social media accounts without knowing uh, their face but yeah i was just happy doing that i think that's really interesting actually because with the prospective students you don't see their pictures do you and you kind of just see their name and the country they're from and that is it um so i think that is really interesting that you can still actually build those connections and still really help those people along their journey and mm -hmm. uh, even in their journey you know in life it's not just about being able to study as you were saying talking about building those foundations before actually coming to study at your university and talking about what they can do beyond their studies at university as well so i think that's really interesting um, so another kind of question i have for you you've answered it a little bit already but what kind of questions did you get that you thought, oh, I can't answer that? And actually, what did you do with those questions that you weren't sure how to answer? I think you kind of touched upon this already, but just wondered if you could delve into that some more. Sometimes in an extreme sense, uh, someone asked me, well, I only have this amount of money and I want to come to Perth. Uh, so mm -hmm. can you find me a, a part-time or full-time job before I come? So yeah. can you be my point of contact in Perth? Can you find me those part-time jobs in these factories or in this uh, hospitality sector. And I, again, I politely answered them. Most of my friends, not 100%, they secured part-time jobs mm -hmm. in the first three months upon that arrival in Perth. So I believe that you could do the same. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to discourage them because I know someone who come from less fortunate uh, background, they, they took money seriously. And then uh, financial problem is serious. And then I know uh, for some of the prospective students, they, they talk to me, I can sense that they, they were so worried about their future. So again, mental health is something serious as well. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to discourage them or just turn them down and move on to the next prospective students. So yeah. I try uh, to put my feet on their shoes and mm -hmm. imagine uh, if I were them and uh, facing the same situation, what would I do? And what would I like Unibody Student Ambassador to answer to me? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, I think uh, sometimes the questions could be very unique, could mm -hmm. be a bit strange, but it's our job to embrace diversity, to embrace the fact that not everyone's coming from the same background with us. And there's no such thing as stupid question. I think that's, that's the number one rule. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've kind of you've hit there. I think it's really about striking that balance between being reassuring, but also being professional. As you said, there were certain things actually you couldn't answer when you know, if someone's asking you, I've got this amount of money and I need to bring it. You can reassure them that actually from experience, my friends have done well, they've got part time jobs, but I can't guarantee it. Um, and I think that's really important to, you know, be be honest, be authentic, be genuine, um, and be you know open about these things. I can't promise you, but also yeah. being very positive and optimistic and uh, and encouraging, as you've said, um, this can be a big worry for people, and actually it could really put them off coming to study, uh, you know, around the financial side of things. So actually being reassuring, talking about the experience that you had, and being able to empower them with those experiences. So that's really great. Awesome, thank you. And uh, my last question on this topic is, how do you think that universities can train students, but also allowing them to stay authentic? So 
obviously a lot of universities do a lot of training sessions we do a training session here at unibuddy but um with that training how do you think they can still keep their authenticity still keep their conversations genuine and and to not lose that through over training them well i think speaking of the cognitive aspect it's very important for every university to give basic knowledge about the university about mm -hmm. the program and about the standard operating procedure i think it's a must but beyond that one in terms of the affective aspect, it's very important to create a family-like situation and environment so mm -hmm. that the student ambassadors could talk to the trainer, facilitator, or team member so that they feel that they were embraced and then it's a family. So there is a room to make mistake, to make an honest mistake, and then to do things better in the future, no judgment at all, and then uh, creating the good environment in the training session because everyday interaction conversation is a part of training so i i'd rather to see that the training program uh, is ongoing it's not just let's say two days training and then you let the unibodies do their job so yeah. it's a continuous process that uh, the organizer the staff the team members uh, from universities should have fantastic i think that's a really good point i think the universities you know as you said should continue to kind of nurture those student ambassadors be there sort of like a family to be able to guide and support them if they do need help with certain questions or if they're feeling overwhelmed being a student ambassador if they just need someone to help them out um if they're getting really stressed out maybe for instance deactivating them on the platform temporarily or um you know there might be questions that they feel that they can't answer and actually they need a little bit more guidance on um, and those kind of mini little mistakes, obviously we don't expect uh, students to be uh, misleading um, prospective students or, or giving them false information, but of course they, it's, it's easy to make mistakes when talking about experience and things like that. And actually if a university kind of brings a student up on that, learning from that mistake and actually using that as, as a building block to be better in future. So um, I definitely agree with, with what you've said there and uh, being able to, to have continuous training, I think that's important as well, because I think a lot of us, and even here, anybody, we can be guilty of uh, being able to offer initial training, but actually not really following that up. And if if you do have ambassadors who are there for three years, or you know, even just that year, I think it, it is important to, to kind of follow up a little bit later on, check in on your ambassadors, and actually um, offering them that that further training, even as Sophie said, in professional development areas, even if it was you know about how to better communicate or how to um, answer certain difficult questions or, or um, objection handling or things like that. I think it's important to uh, really push for those, those training intermittently rather than just right at the start and then letting them get on with it, as you would say. Couldn't agree more, yeah. Fantastic. I can see we've got another um, comment in our uh, chat feed. And this was just about earlier on when we were talking about incentivization. I asked UCFB um, if they offered a certificate or if it was on the uh, here degree certificate of the students. And they said all of our students get a certificate to certify that they were ambassadors at graduation. So at their graduation ceremonies, they actually get a certificate to say they're ambassadors. That's wow. really cool. And uh, but we give out physical kind of trophies of program winner. So that's really cool. So those uh, that actually win the uh, the program yeah. ambassador. Yeah. So they've got something nice and shiny to show everyone, <laughs> put into a nice cabinet. Uh, yeah. And uh, it says a principal award and now the ambassador as well. So they've got the program winner, principal award and the ambassador award. So they've got that trophy, that physical trophy there. And they're made of glass, which is not fun when two students drop them on graduation day. <laughs> <laughs> that would be me I'd slip up I, I know I did a little trip on my my graduation as my heels were a little bit too high <laughs> life um, happens it's yeah right. absolutely they've said that's one positive of having online graduations now I guess <laughs> no little trips on the uh, on the graduation that's a good point there but uh, that's fantastic. So as you can see, lots of different universities do it really differently, different ideas of incentivizing your ambassadors, but also rewarding them. Um, so opening it up to the audience again. So uh, we were speaking about the 
keeping student ambassadors on brand in this section but now I kind of want to open it up to the audience and ask them to put their feet in the shoes of a student ambassador and think about how they might answer uh, commonly asked questions so uh, this is hopefully gonna <laughs> make you cut your ambassadors a little bit of slack because some of these questions can be quite tricky so um, William I asked you before today's session um, for some questions and you said one of the questions you got asked a lot was how do I survive semester one <laughs> yeah. which I think is such a general and such a broad question and I wanted to open up to our audience to think about right back to their um, higher education experience this might have been a couple of years ago for some of you it could have been a long time ago for others uh, so having a think about actually how did you survive semester one what would you answer this question and having a think about keeping um, all those values in mind being genuine being authentic being open being a storyteller and all those things that you mentioned earlier so it'd be interesting to hear some feedback in the chat about how you think you would uh, answer that question how do you survive semester one and maybe rather than putting uh, a fully fledged answer there you can let me know bullet points of things that you might cover uh, William how would you answer that question when you got asked those questions how do you survive semester one? What sort of thing were you talking about? Well, before I answer that question, I think one, one good thing about Unibody platform uh, is that, well, basically I love writing. I write mm -hmm. books and I write, I write articles. So uh, I was given opportunities to share my articles about how to survive semester one mm -hmm. so that not uh, every student will ask me the same questions. I mean, <laughs> it's all right to ask me the same questions. Yeah. It's, it's quite common. That's why I, I reflect on myself. Okay, this is a hot topic. So mm -hmm. I wrote an article about that, I put it on Unibody uh, platform. And then when they ask me the questions, I just answer them uh, generally. Well, this is the three things, the top tips that I did and I survived. If you want to find out more, this is my article. So you, you could find the real examples, uh, the real struggle and also the solutions mm -hmm. when you face uncertainties or confusion during your, your semester one. And then I uh, told them that you have to take things slow. You mm -hmm. don't have to uh, get in rush. You have to make friends, but do it slowly, politely, and know people step by step. So mm -hmm. it's not an instant process, but once you fit in, once you immerse yourself with local culture and with the new habit of study, because they might uh, study, let's say, uh, undergraduate study five or six years ago, and then they kind of lose touch when mm -hmm. going back to school. So I, I told them to take things slowly, um, to make friends, to to let yourself make mistakes, but uh, don't dwell uh, too long in your mistakes. So I, I share it through my sharing session, through my chat, and also through my articles. I think that's a good idea, actually. It's something that I speak about in the ambassador training sometimes, is talking about subjects that actually you don't get asked about, but actually you've made a good point there, talking about things that you get asked very frequently, uh, writing a blog post that you can say, here are my top three tips, but actually if you want to know more, have a read of my article that I've written. I think that's a really good tip for um, anyone who's managing their student ambassadors out there, is to ask the uh, uni buddies to actually write blog posts for those <laughs> questions they get asked a lot. And also, I mean, um, it would be difficult to kind of measure this, but really, I imagine there are a lot of um, prospective students who maybe didn't even reach out and talk to you one to one, but actually engaged with your blog posts. And yeah. uh, that was enough for them. They engaged passively. They maybe weren't feeling confident enough to come and approach you one-to-one, um, -one, but actually sat and read your blog post, absorbed it, learned more about the university and quite possibly joined the university due to the blog post that you wrote. Um, so by I the way, it's, uh, it's very heartwarming for me to see that my articles, the surviving semester one, was clicked by around 600 or 500 uh, participants. I mean, the viewers. So, wow. Yeah, amazing. So yeah, that's a big reach as well. So if you're thinking, you know, you could have spoken to some of those people, but also some yeah. of those could be just passive um, readers, those who weren't actually engaging one to one. So that's fantastic. Awesome. So again, yeah, they, there's definitely a lot of value in those blog posts. And I think that sometimes sometimes gets overlooked uh, because the one to one chats are so great and so so useful and you can really see the impact straight away with those but I think with the blog post there's definitely um something there and, and something really important about that I can see uh we've got a lot of love for blog posts in the chat there Alice and Carolina have both said that they love the Unibody blog post ideas and uh they love student blog posts um 
Stephanie from UCFB has said, uh, this is a tricky one. How would I answer this question? How do you survive semester one? So she's really understanding that uh, the struggle of, uh, of the ambassadors there. I would definitely address personal tips, she says. Uh, list some staff students that can chat. They can chat to on campus, uh, like student services and things like that. So those support networks that are available to them. And uh, like William, I would tell them to take their time. Um, I do love the blog post idea based on what they're being asked a lot. So she, she also agrees that actually writing those blog posts can be really helpful. Um, but also, yeah, I think it's really important to pinpoint those student services early on um, before they need them. And I think this is something that actually you spoke about already, William, um, talking about those students that came in saying, I've got this amount of money, what can I do? But actually saying that here are the services that are going to be available for you. You might not need them right now, but actually later on down the line, um, you may need to use these student services and actually letting them know before um, things get crazy and, and they actually really need those services, knowing that they're available beforehand can be really reassuring and comforting and definitely makes you feel more confident coming to university, don't you think? So true. Yeah, fantastic. And Sophie said, focus, oh, this is how she would answer that, how do you survive semester one question, focus on immersing yourself in university and campus life, making friends and as an international student, stay in touch regularly with family and friends back home. And I think that's really important to bear in mind as well. When yeah. we're talking about, you know, that student experience doesn't need to just be about being a student on campus, it can be about your home life as well. And uh, as the beginning of your university experience can be a daunting time and it's great to learn, uh, great to lean on your support system. So a lot of talk about different support systems there, you know, whether that's actually at the university or whether that's your family and friends back home and uh, knowing that those support systems are there if you do end up struggling later down the line. Semester one can be really exciting and really full on, but I think when you start to get to semester two, you go, oh, I'm on my own now. Oh, this is, this is real life, you know, it feels like a holiday for the first semester. It's all very exciting and very new. And then I think when you get into that semester two, you think, oh, OK, I need to actually knuckle down and, and really get my study on, if you like. <laughs> and uh, definitely um, that's when things start to change. So I've got another question uh, that you, you gave me earlier on as well. Um, and you asked, where's the most interesting or famous place to go in your area? So yeah. I'd like the um, people listening, the viewers, to have a think about how they might have answered that question um, around their own universities. Um, or if you're working at a university around that area, but also um, when you were at university, what was your idea? So how would you answer the question, where's the most interesting or famous place to go in your area? And William, how did you answer that question when you got asked? Well, like that? I answered that based on my personal experience, because <laughs> I think uh, people agree that Western Australia is a very scenic place. It's a good place to do road trip. So mm -hmm. I just tell them the stories. That's why I say that storytelling is very important. I didn't show them the picture because it's, I think it's uh, impossible to share pictures through university platform. But mm -hmm. when you have the stories, when you have the experience and you genuinely want people to know about it, want to know the beauty of it so that they should come to your place, to your country, to your university, uh, I think it, it will come up automatically. Because I, I did road trip for, I think more than five times and never get bored. So I want them, once they come here, they come to Perth, they do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. So, so really using your own experiences. And I like the idea of kind of painting a picture in their mind, because of course right. on anybody, as you said, you can't share Always. those files yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so you can't share a picture, but actually you can do a good job in describing it. And really, do you want to ruin it? Do you want to... <laughs> <laughs> you want to wait until they actually get there and experience it for themselves rather than giving them a sneak peek if you like but uh that's great and i think yeah, really drawing on those experiences you said earlier that you got asked you know where are the best places to eat where are the best places to hang out as well so lots of questions around the area and i think as a student who was living in that area and it was an area that was actually new to you as well i think you must have become an expert and maybe a bit of a tour guide around perth really expert. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. and i've seen that actually you um worked for study in australia as well as um an ambassador for them as well so talking about your kind of experience in australia and perth um yeah. so that's really great and actually being an ambassador um for the country really and actually talking about how great it is to study there so that's because cool. uh, basically we have no idea once we become a university student ambassadors i agree with you earlier what you you, you said earlier that it will unlock so many surprising doors. You never mm. know. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I think just as we're kind of wrapping up our session now, I think it'd be interesting to hear from you, William, what kind of doors do you feel it opened? And whilst you're telling us, if you do have any questions, do let us know in the chat box, just because we have got five minutes left. But um, yes, William, if you could let us know what doors, you know, being a Unibody ambassador has opened for you, what opportunities have you had since? And uh, what do you feel like you've actually gained from it? Well, I think the most recent example was that I came back from Perth to Jakarta on the 2nd of July, 2020. Mm -hmm. So it's around uh, three and a half months ago. And upon my arrival in Jakarta, um, in two weeks' time, I got a new job as a director now, uh, director of marketing, communication, and also community development in the Indonesia Financial Technology Association. It's a growing sector in Indonesia. And it opens uh, new doors of opportunities for me to know more people, industry players, as well as the government official in Indonesia. And I think it's very important. And it aligns with my uh, study because I studied communication in my undergraduate and also I took Master of Strategic Communication during my postgraduate study. So mm -hmm. I think working in the communication area, being able to manage a team, uh, the way Unibody team manage me, it's, it's very important because I learned from them that we have to create the family-like environment in order uh, for people to perform well. So it's not only about the study, it's not only about the Unibody experience or getting paid, but it's also a simulation of leadership roles. Because we never know uh, another Unibody student ambassadors out there, when you finish resuming your job and going back to your country or uh, staying in the country where you study, you never know what kind of opportunities will come to you. And if you have this leadership simulation, uh, talking to new people, cultural intelligence, um, regardless of what kind of people you meet in the future, you are, you are, you are already prepared to do it to talk to them, to communicate with them. So, yeah. Amazing. I think that's really interesting as well, the fact that actually, you know, you never know what a student ambassador is going to go on to do. And you've used that example of leadership that you saw, that example of management, and actually brought it to your own role. And actually now as a director, um, being able to, to translate that into your own company and to your own team. So I think that's really interesting and actually something that maybe universities might not have ever thought about before, actually being able to uh, lead by example and being able to, to show a good example of that leadership and, uh, and that management. So I can see we've got one more comment or question. So I'm just going to read this out and then uh, I think we might have to wrap the session up. Uh, so I'm just going to read from Stephanie uh, from UCFB. She said, we have two campuses, one in London and one in Manchester, uh, based within Wembley and Ethad Stadium. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So I think our students would uh, say those themselves in London for social life. Oh, so this is around uh, where they would recommend is the best place. Uh, I would definitely say Box Park, which is a three minute walk from accommodation, which is amazing. They do events and have so many food options. In Manchester, students may say Old Trafford or just City Centre, which just has so many food options and drink options. I'm loving this uh, emphasis on food, <laughs> food and drink. It's making me hungry. I've had breakfast. But... I'm hungry now, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You've just had your lunch, William. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Manchester is known as such a student city, so students will find it so easy to talk about socialising. London tends to do, uh, to be more difficult as it's just so large. So Stephanie's example of the answer there, whether she was talking about, you know, what are the best places to hang out? What's the uh, most interesting, famous place to go in your area? She really focused on that student perspective mm -hmm. and actually what a student would be interested in. And I think that's really good. But she's like, as we've both said, you know, putting uh, the shoes on on your, your own feet, you know, uh, being able to actually um, get into the mindset of a prospective student and, and thinking what would they like, what would they be interested in. So that's fantastic. Uh, so I think we are going to have to wrap up our session now. If anybody does have any questions following our session or wants to chat to myself or William, please do pop into that speakers lounge um, on the event and we'll be hanging out in there um, ready to answer any questions about our experiences or our um, the opportunities that we both had. Um, happy to talk about student ambassadors, your ideas, and kind of bat our ideas around and uh, let you know our opinions on those things but um thank you for listening to us today william do you have anything else that you would like to say to our viewers today yeah i just want to say uh, thank you so much for everyone's uh, watching our session um even though i'm not meeting you personally i know that you are going to do great in your life in the unibody roles that you are doing or as the organizer so i'm wishing you all the best thank you thank you so much
Fantastic. Thank you. That was lovely. So thank you all for, the, for watching today. As I mentioned, if you've got any questions, pop in the speakers lounge. I've seen there's already one notification in there. So we'll have a look uh, in a second. But thank you for your time. Um, thank you for listening. And do let us know if you've got any questions. Thank you.